F Global is one of the largest, most prestigious hackathons in the blockchain developer space. The February 2022 Road to Web 3 event was focused on the migration from Web 2 social networks to Web 3 technologies. Over the weekend, around 400 teams built projects using sponsors' technology, including Polygon, Uniswap, Morales, and Web 3 Auth. This video talks about the experience of participating in an F Global hackathon, the project that myself and John built, and advice for anyone looking to take part in hackathons in the future. Good morning, my name is James Buccini, and on this channel I create content about decentralized finance and blockchain development. Please note that the project that we built was specifically for the hackathon, it's not deployed to mainnet and ignore anyone that goes and tries and sells you the true tokens. The F Global Hackathon is quite unique in that the application itself is quite a challenge. First you have to fill in a long application form which is like a job application. Once you've done that, you then have to stake some funds to join a hackathon. You have to send about $10 worth of ETH, I think it is, to a contract address, and that stakes your place. Once you've completed a project and you submit your project at the end of the hackathon, you get those funds back. I think there's two parts to this. The first is I think it becomes a barrier to entry to try and keep the numbers down, to make it more of a manageable event for the organizers. And then the second part is I think it encourages the hackers to actually submit a project at the end to get their stake back. And by staking funds, it kind of gives everyone a vested interest in the event itself. Once you've done your application, I assume everyone gets accepted, and then you get sent through a link to a live hacker dashboard. You go there and you've got this cute little interface with a chat box and a live video feed of whatever demo or talk is taking place at the time. It's also worth noting they've got a Discord channel and a YouTube channel. I found these more useful. So you've got the Discord channel where everyone kind of goes to chat to the sponsors, to each other hackers, and there's also some mentors there which can offer technical support if you get stuck. And then the YouTube channel, I'll link to that above, is really good because they've got all the talks on there from this hackathon and past hackathons, and there's actually really good content. Austin Griffith's done a couple of talks about his Scaffold Eve platform, which are well worth checking out. And I think generally it's a good channel to keep an eye on for the latest developments in the Ethereum ecosystem. The main event sponsor was Polygon, so it makes sense that we were deploying contract code to the Polygon Mumbai testnet. This is an EVM compatible blockchain, so we could use Solidity. There are a number of tracks available, like best DeFi, best NFT app. The one that we really focused on was the best web free implementation of a Web2 product. And without further ado, let's show you what will be built. Zero X Tree connects your social accounts to your NFT wallet, enabling friends and collectors to browse, bid, and buy your NFTs without releasing custody. You can crawl any wallet address by appending it to the Xerox Tree domain and browse a gallery of all the NFTs that that wallet holds. Owners can publish their Xerox Tree spaces to social media platforms to show off their collections, and galleries can be claimed and customized by a web free login by the wallet owner. Social sharing is taken to a whole new level with Twitter custom cards, which bring NFTs to life natively within the Twitter app. There is currently no better way to share your latest purchase. And potential buyers can even bid on these natively from within Twitter, connecting MetaMask directly without ever leaving the Twitter domain. Linktree provided a simple solution for sharing all our social profiles in a single space, and it's grown to become a staple of Web2 technologies and now receives over 145 million visitors every month. We want Xerox to become the industry standard way to share and display NFTs, bridging Web2.0 social platforms with emerging Web3 technologies. On Xerox Tree, any user can bid on any NFT in anyone else's digital wallet without that user listing it on a third party marketplace. The owner will be notified when they browse their own wallet address and they can choose to either accept, reject, or ignore. OpenSea is currently the largest NFT marketplace with over 500,000 users and 4 billion in monthly trading volume. Our product differentiates itself by flipping the initiative from the seller to the buyer. Trading fees are lower too. 90% lower, in fact, incentivizing NFT traders to use a decentralized platform which doesn't need to make 2.5% on every trade. The front end is built as a mobile first progressive web application. Morales provides serverless functions, contract event login, and authentication. Users can open a deep link directly from a Twitter post to launch Xerox Tree in MetaMask Mobile. A user can also claim their space by signing with the associated wallet. This provides options to customize their space with custom headers, social links, and templates. Someone has bid on this NFT, so I can accept that and receive the funds instantly into my MetaMask wallet. The NFT goes directly to the buyer and is never held by a third-party marketplace. Now let's talk a little bit about the tokenomics. Trading fees from the platform go directly from the smart contract into a Uniswap v3 liquidity pool, increasing the liquidity for the tree governance token and provide an incentive for stakeholders to participate. If Xerox Tree goes on to become key infrastructure in the NFT space, 
then the governance of that protocol become valuable, as will the liquidity from the trading fees. Xerox Tree and the Tree Token will go live with a truly fair launch. There's no pre-mine, there's no team allocation, there's no vested VC funds. The project will incentivize early growth through the distribution of its governance token to users of the platform. When a trade is completed, both the previous owner and the new owner will be distributed governance tokens in line with the fees that they've paid and a decrease in schedule of rewards. This will provide the early traction that we need to get sellers regularly checking their Xerox Tree spaces for bids. By distributing the token to users, we further empower a community of NFT traders to go out and promote the platform to new participants. Tree token holders are the stakeholders and governors of the protocol, and the tree token itself has built-in functionality for voting and delegating votes. Proposals could include future developments for the platform, we were somewhat limited by the timeframe for the hackathon, but development opportunities could include wallets, wallet on-chain messaging providing direct communications between the buyer and the seller, multi-chain expansions providing exposure to new blockchain ecosystems, integration of social tokens, gaming tokens, and other emerging digital assets. Zero X3 was built by two guys over the course of a weekend for the F Global Hackathon. I think it really demonstrates the power of what's possible in Web3. It makes sense to me that in the future we're going to see more and more of the trading of digital assets move to truly decentralized platforms. Thank you to the F Global team and everyone that was involved in putting the event together. Hopefully myself and John will be able to get down to one of your events in a not too distant future to meet some of you in person. Thank you for watching. So that's our demo and that formed the main part of our pitch to judges. If you want to mint some testnet NFTs, you can do that on OpenSea, and then you can play around them in Xerox Tree, and all the code is open sourced on GitHub. Probably the biggest negative of this event was the protocol around the pitching. It was a bit of a horror show where you get put into this green room of hell, which is this massive Zoom call with hundreds of developers and one event organizer trying to teach them all how to use Zoom. I was in there for an hour and a half before our team name got called. Some people were in there for even longer. And once your team gets called, you have to show that you can use Zoom, and then you get approved to go through to another Zoom room where you get to display your video to the judges and then they ask you a couple of questions. One of the event organizers did mention that the hackathon has exceeded their expectations uh, across all metrics, but particularly with the number of applicants. And there's obviously gonna be some scaling issues as they get bigger and this becomes more and more of a larger event. Now let's talk about the prizes. We won two prizes, or actually technically three prizes. There was an event participation prize from Polygon of about $300. Then we won second prize for our integration of Morales. This uh, is a kind of a Firebase-esque type product which sits between a smart contract and the Web3 platform. If you want to store data off chain or you want to create kind of cloud serverless functions or you want to do event login from Solidity and then have that backed up into a MongoDB database, then that's the kind of thing you can use that for. It's an interesting product and I think it will eventually get brought out by AWS. Then we also won first prize for our integration of Web3 Auth. Web3 Auth is a social platform for creating wallet addresses. So you can log in with Twitter or your Gmail and create a wallet instance from that, which you can then use via Web3 in a normal way. Interestingly, during the hackathon, they actually brought them two products together. And you can now use Web3 Auth for login and then Morales for interacting with the blockchain and off-chain data. So what about advice for future hackathons? Well, the first thing I'd say is go in with an open mind about what you're going to build. Don't go in with a preset idea that you want to build this and then try and kind of bend it to meet the criteria. Try and come up with an idea which is particularly well suited to the hackathon itself and uses a lot of the sponsor's technology. The more tracks and challenges it, that your product uh, fits into, the more chance you've got of winning prizes. If you get stuck, don't be afraid to ask for help. I had an absolute nightmare fighting with Uniswap's non-fungible position manager. And then I had the issues with trying to do just a simple swap on Uniswap and I was pulling my hair out because I knew it was something simple, but I just, I just couldn't figure it out. I wrote out the problem and posted it to Discord and within five minutes, the problem was solved. There's something about actually writing out a problem so that someone else can recreate it that kind of puts all the things in order and can help direct you to where the issue is actually lying. Always try and get the demo finished as soon as possible because that'll leave you enough time to film a good product demo and fill in the submission form, do the screenshots and things like that, which are all very time consuming and you don't want to leave it to the last minute, like we did. You can use boilerplates and starting projects for your code. There's actually some good kind of hackathon web free boilerplates that you can find online. I'm actually going to put together some of the smart contracts that I built for this project and put them into kind of a tokenomics style boilerplate for a future video. The other thing I'd say is don't go into the hackathon expecting to win prizes, no matter how good you think your code is. You know, there was over 300 projects submitted to this hackathon and it's not like the 
the judges can actually look through each individual bit of code to kind of see the elegant beauty that you produced. It might be something in your project demo or something that they just didn't like or didn't connect with. That's going to mean you're overlooked for some of the prizes. There's a certain variance in doing well in these hackathons. The final thing I'd say is just be nice to the event organizers and the judges. They've got a very hard job organizing a bunch of degenerate blockchain developers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful. Please subscribe to the channel for updates, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.